There we go. Cool. Okay. Now, um, thank you. We were we were cut off for technical reasons, and uh, uh, I know that this is your coming out of the closet, but you said that on the way here, the vehicle that you were in, the bus. Oh yeah, the bus had brake failure, total, yeah, yeah. total brake failure. And I had so to walk it's, it's kind of a bumpy <laughs> thing. Really. The spirit Ooh. might not, the, the spirit might be thinking this is bold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to, to start out and just cover a couple of points sure. from, from my end. And that is that uh, when we discussed all of this yesterday, this brought back a whole period of my life back in the late 1980s, which mm -hmm. gee, I hadn't thought of it, you know, since the 1980s, but I, I actually wrote it up in a book, cool. uh, the Levesque cases. Yep. And uh, uh, the that is where uh, I won on behalf of PR Levesque, a client in, Ontario, a $750 million judgment against the government of Ontario. And what they did is they went down and to a court in eight, you know, we had done everything in the, in the courts there in Toronto, the main courts, and they went down to Ajax, Ontario, in, in one of the Masonic courts there and overturned it in an unlawful proceeding. So I, I just want to say, and the reason that I bring this up is that, and want to share it with the readers, it just so that I've been through an experience where, where I saw how the Masons really have used the admiralty law and the courts to enslave the people and to do all sorts of unlawful Correct. Proceedings, and I just wanted to put that that in as corroboratory evidence, so that people have, um, you know, the viewers have some sort of a reality. What, what people don't what people don't realize is the Warehouse Receipts Act is the most powerful act in the books. Period yeah. in the world. Yeah. Okay. Ask any trustee; they'll admit to it, hands down, no questions asked. In uh, the United States, uh, in 1933, they uh, created uh, uh, the Federal Reserve. In 1917, they created Federal Reserve. And then in 1933, they instituted warehouse receipts. And at the time, Rockefeller can be quoted. And I've got a video clip of this that I'll share. Okay. Right. Where he plainly outlines that this is not uh, a, a fraud, it's a plan. And someone will get through this maze. Right. And, it basically, and when he does, uh, they have to comply. Yeah. Okay, now, yeah. that was passed in 1933 in the United States. Uh, the Warehouse Receipts Act and uh, the Vital Statistics Act came into effect in Canada in 1947 and uh, uh, in Ontario uh, it was revised the Warehouse Receipts Act was revised in 1989 and that was the year of my abnormal birth landing right okay uh, on my abnormal birth my dad in World War II fought uh, was a training officer never went to Europe but he stayed in Camp Petawawa and uh, he was the chartered accountant or a municipal accountant before that. So he would have known uh, what a warehouse receipt was. Okay. It would have been mandatory in his training. Okay. And he knew uh, that the Warehouse Receipts Act was coming in and the Vital Statistics Act, where we were going to be used to back the war debt. Human beings were going to be used to back the war debt. And uh, as an officer, he signed a commission saying that him and his descendants were not responsible for the war debt. Uh, I was born in uh, 51. Uh, my registration, all the registration happened on January 7th, 52. 
and the king died a month later. Okay, and the register was closed. Uh, my birth statement says on it that um, uh, it's not a registration. It says flat out written. It's a very special birth statement. Um, it looks like that. Okay. Uh, most people have a red seal over here, which hides the number. Okay. Mine's a transparent seal. It's called a gray issue. Okay. It has the number 37,300 written right there. It has right there, and that's the district of Nipissing. And my mother is now 37,300, which is California law 37,300, titled to property while on water. It's a UCC law, okay? Universal Commercial Code. And that means I am a free man on the land because I've got this title while on water, which is UCC territory. Right. Okay. Uh, I fought this in 2011, and uh, it got me nowhere other than I spent 70 days in jail and uh, uh, was released and saying I can't come back to the United States for 10 years. Great, no problem. But at least I tried. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then I uh, found out that uh, the Warehouse Receipts Act had been amended in Ontario. And uh, it, read it. It's on my website. Uh, my Facebook account has uh, this whole court filing. Yeah. Your, your website is? Well, I don't have a website. My oh. website was uh, barred by uh, Homeland Insecurity back oh. in 2011. Oh, I when see. When I was doing so. this original paperwork back yeah. then, they cut me off. Oh, I see. Uh, my, my website was banned. Everything was shut down. Yeah. Uh, and uh, basically, I won but I was, again, placed under international publication bans, again, right. for having filed it because they refused to act, okay? Right. Um, right now I'm filing again because uh, that's just the way it is. It has to be done. Yeah. Uh, the reality is, is in Canada, uh, we patriated our Constitution in uh, our criminal code in 1955, and it was called the Criminal Code of Canada. That remained till 19, 2001, where Jean Chrétien introduced the criminal code. Right. He's of where? Former, he, he's the former prime minister of yes. Canada. Yeah. Of where was what I asked. Okay. Now, what happened is, is in the original criminal code of Canada, they said very clear that section 8.2, which is the Territories Act, was there specifically to protect us from laws that had been long gone off the books of, you know, of England and did not, were never written into Canadian law. And they cited slavery at that time, were not ever written in the Canadian Code, Criminal Code of Canada. And uh, because they, were, they hadn't been in effect for 100 years. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, um, we, uh, these criminal code, in 2001, uh, the Supreme Court of Canada rightfully started reintroducing slavery laws because slavery was making and showing its ugly face. Okay, back in 2001, uh, the law called 279 was sexual assault. And it was about half a page long. And it's the equivalent of what was the rape laws in England back before they banned slavery. Right. Okay. And in 2005, uh, I was operating the Marijuana Party Compassion Club, the Vancouver East Marijuana Party Compassion Club, which is in a territory, federal territory, you know, a federal parliamentary territory. And the city of Vancouver's police chief had uh, Bill Graham, so I think it's Bill Graham. Uh, uh, he uh, invaded my territory, plundered my bounty, and uh, vanquished me from my domain. Right. And that is in old English language, rape. Right. So I charged the chief of police with rape. Okay? From these criminal charges. Right. Okay? And uh, at the time... Uh, I had Chief Justice Brenner come up, and he went, Mr. Boyer, 
we don't call that rape anymore. The law's <laughs> gone. And I went, well, you know, you know, uh, I was raided by the RCMP or by the city police where they had no jurisdiction because they, you can't raid a, a constituency office of a federal party. You just can't do it. Okay. And then he vanquished my, he, he plundered my bounty, which is he stole all my pot. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. He, he stole all my pot and uh, he uh, um, vanquished me from my domain. And he says, those are the three criteria of rape. And he goes, well, we don't call it that anymore. And says, what do you call it? Because that's what happened. And it's a charge. And he didn't have an answer. But within a week, I was placed under a gag order. And it turns out that the gag order was because I um, was being placed under 279 of the Criminal Code of Canada. And I wasn't aware that that's why the gag order was until about a month ago when I looked up, see, 279 used to be called sexual assault, which has everything to do with rape back, you know, like since they didn't take, they, they took it out of the code, but it was now called sexual assault, okay? And um, the gag order was under 279. So says the case law. You know, you go to the criminal code and it's now, in, you know. So what happened is in 2002, they introduced these motions and I happened to be the first case law application of slavery being reintroduced because they threw this gag order on me because I had a legitimate case of slavery having been done on me. So they threw this gag order on me on the assumption that eventually this law would be passed, be codified, and not be in conflict because the criminal code cannot have any, has to be letter perfect. There can't be conflicts from one law to the next. Right. And there was like eight pages of laws that were in conflict. Uh, since 2001, there's been 90 fixes of the criminal code yeah. to try to make it good. It's now called Bill, Bill C-46 that Harper passed, okay? And uh, 15 years later, after 2001, the law expired in February 3rd, 2016, okay? And the provisions for slavery of 279 are now in default. Right. Okay? Uh, in January, I finally hammered the courts to with a petition that the bars that the BC Law Society filed against me, and I filed back, you know, saying, you need to lift this ban on me. Okay? And I never mentioned 279. Right. Just, just left it out, okay? Because by the time I was filing, yeah, it was still in the effect. Yeah, it was exactly. still in effect, okay? So I really can't really let the the cat out of the bag, yeah, when it's still in effect, okay? Yeah, and uh, they were setting court dates, and they tried to set a court date of uh, the twenty eighth, and, and I'm like, oh no, no, that's way too fast. Uh, uh, give me another date. So they gave me the tenth of February, where I went in. The law had expired on. The third. And at this court date, I walked in saying, I don't like being your slave. I don't want to be your slave. You've got to drop this order on me. And I, I, I was quite belligerent about my slavery. Okay? And the judge ruled that, you know, I said, you have no jurisdiction here. And she basically said she did. She totally ignored this here and made a ruling saying that the gag order of 19, 2005 was held of help. Yeah. They added that I could no longer represent anyone else, so they augmented the, the, the order right. and threw in a $1,500 court cost. Right. Okay? Uh, I then filed an interim report within a week saying, excuse me, uh, the law had expired a week before, and this is a grievous violation of slavery in Canada because the provision had gone into default. What was called sexual assault in 2001 is now called trafficking in persons, and it's like three pages long. 
covers everything from you know trafficking in children, trafficking in sex, you know, sex with children, right. migrant workers, uh, coal mine worker, you know, mine work. Uh, it covers all the phases of slavery. Right. All those laws are back in effect. Yeah, uh, but they wouldn't pass Section Two Seventy Nine One. Okay, mm -hmm. and it went into default on March third, mm -hmm. and that means that the laws to protect us from slavery don't exist. They never did exist in Canada, and now they were in default. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is where the conspiracy, you cannot get around the conspiracy of this, okay? On about September 6th, uh, the Canadian government signed the TPP agreement and the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the European Trade Partnership were both signed on the same date. And I'm saying flat out, but that's all under UCC. And under UCC, they never could have signed that because the law is supreme. Respondent Superior says the law is supreme. And had they not, they would never have been able to sign that on March on February 2nd. But on February 5th, the law was in default, so they could sign it. Okay? So that's when they signed the agreement, which means... And then a week later, they threw in extra provisions, another 33 pages, those infamous, you know, the same 33 pages they threw in at NAFTA, okay? And that's where the conflict arises, okay? Because now someone can challenge that since we don't have slavery laws and uh, you cannot stop us from imposing slavery through the TPP. And they would do it. And that's exactly what they were planning on doing. Because yeah. they could not have signed the agreement two days earlier. Yeah. And in fact, could you relate the anecdote of the Crown Attorney that... Okay. The with? Crown Attorney, after I filed my motion of appeal, openly admitted that they were using my case to return slavery into Canada. That was their intent. Okay? Fully an intent. But I caught them at their own trap. Yeah. Okay? Basically, it comes down to uh, when I filed the interim thing, um, there was a guy called uh, in Ottawa who was filing the documents at the uh, Senate Marijuana Conference, mm -hmm. and he served it to the head of the RCMP uh, union, police, uh, RCMP police union. Mm -hmm. And he smiled from ear to ear, mm -hmm. saying, wow, there's a challenge to 279. Mm -hmm. Smile from ear to ear. Here in Vancouver, I was serving. It was the day of uh, the uh, Allard decision coming down. And I served several police officers in the courts and the police with my interim saying, hey, there's a clear violation of 279 here. Mm -hmm. And here I had a high-ranking police officer come up to me and says, no, 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 279 is waiting for a case law. The reason it's not transferred over is because we haven't had a case law precedent to transfer it over. And again, I smiled from ear to ear, because clearly this guy had read my message that I passed off and was telling me that I'm the case law precedent. Right. Okay? It, it's, first out for, it's the first out of the bag. So here the law expired. Here the crown, you know, the, the government does this malfeasance. I mean, they did everything they could to reintroduce slavery. And then three days later, I'm in a court of law, and I'm the challenge. They're not the challenge. I'm the challenge that slavery has now been done. Uh, because it turns out that uh, when I checked into this law that's in default, they've got all these numbers on the bottom as to what case law applies have been done on it. And I'm three of the case laws there. Uh, I'm the original applicant saying that my gag order was that I was under slavery. You know, it was under 279. My next appeal was uh, Judge Bagnall, and that was a 126 of the Criminal Code of Canada, which I should have won, but again, they imposed this slavery thing on me, so that was the second count. And the third count was uh, an Elections Canada thing on the rule of law, and uh, that one, uh, so it was three of the case law applications of slavery, and the, the law had expired one week before I went into court, and they slammed me with it. Now, Ask any now, lawyer. That is a, a hornet's nest of liability. Now, as, as, as a senior official with the Marijuana Party, 
uh, you know that the Liberal Party, number one, ran on a platform of legalization yes. of cannabis. Number two, ran on a platform of signing the TPP. Okay. Do you think that Prime Minister Trudeau and the party knew that the slavery provision was about to expire? And number two, as a senior official of the marijuana party, do you think that his initial offer to legalize cannabis was genuine or was it allied with the slavery provisions? He, uh, it's, uh, what can I say? He, he uh, guilty is by what guilty does, okay? And three days, after, two or three days after the law expired, uh, his top officials signed the TPP and the European Trade Agreement, and it never could have been done had they, they were ordered, you know, the law says that on February 3rd, they had to pass an act of parliament to enact these laws, or the law is in default, period, okay? Three days later, they signed these two agreements because there are no provisions in the Criminal Code of Canada for slavery. They all became default two days before. Okay, I'm in court a week later, and the crown, oh no, the, the guy in charge of the bar openly admitted that he was using my case to reintroduce slavery throughout Canada. Okay, and that I caught him with his hands in the, in the cookie jar because I filed. You know, that's what I filed. I filed a motion saying that, you know, in that, okay, one, it says, see, People have been prosecuting me for the last 12 years under a law that they hoped would pass. That means everyone who's trampled on me in the bar society and the you know, Vancouver court system and the federal, in the elections Canada, all these abuses, all of these people have been hoping that the law would pass and it didn't. And that's so huge a liability. And basically I'll, I'll read the, the application for leave of appeal. It says, take notice that Mark Pierre Boyer, who was never recognized as being a private individual with territorial rights and or an official agent of the marijuana party, here, because had, if they recognized this, they couldn't have stopped me. They're just saying I'm an ordinary resident, not these people with titles. Okay? Now, it says, hereby applies to leave to appeal from uh, to the Court of Appeals of BC on the order of Madam Justice Adair in an oral judgment of February 10th, 2015, uh, 800 Smite Street, because our appeal is based on this, now at face value, criminal assumption that the BC Law Society can continue to persecute and trample on Mark Boyer's freedom of movement under Section 279 of the Criminal Code after this law has expired which creates a huge hornet's nest of liability of having systematically defrauded, de denied Mark Boyer any right to due process under, for over a decade, which was created the moment this provision in law was converted to be in an in-default provision of the law, which in effect compromises the entire integrity of the criminal code since 2001. Okay, this is on a form one. Okay, I could have filed a Form 7, which would have mean, meant I'd be in court for at least five years, just like your court case was, the five-year process. But when you fill a Form 1, they have to decide 30 days later in a half-hour ruling whether this, is, this, you know, this charge deserves a writ of stay and execution of orders. Okay, because form one is an application to, would you please review this review, this, this appeal? And uh, this is not an error by the judge. This is a crime by the judge. It's also a crime by the Bar Association who are saying they were using my case to reintroduce slavery. 
on a law that was obsolete. Uh, slavery laws are 14 year indictments under 336 of the Criminal Code of Canada. 14 years. Okay? It's a serious charge. And uh, that's what I'm saying. Okay? Uh, I'm not saying, I'm not starting a five year process. I'm saying that, you know, on the 30 days later, on the 21st here, on the 9th, I filed, see February 10th there? I filed on the 9th. Because the next day would have been, uh, two days later would have been the 30th, because it's 28-day month, okay? So it's 30 calendar days, and I filed. And that means the Crown has to respond to my charge that they have to put a stay on this uh, wrong, you know, this right to file, okay? Because the law had expired, and they must execute some orders, okay? And the rea at face value, Madam Justice Adair, even though she has an excuse that somebody told her to do it, is the one who pronounced, okay, and announces the pronunciation of the charge came from her. She has to be charged with slavery, okay, violating slavery provisions because the head lawyer for the bar openly admitted that they were doing this intentionally and they were going to use my case right. to do this, okay? And how that's done is, okay, the law expired, they file a law, you know, they file the, 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 the treaties, the international yeah. treaties. Now Canada's obligated to treaties. Yeah. And they now file, they filed up these new things and then their lawyers are going to charge the government of Canada saying these slavery provisions in here have to be enforced because the case law and Mr. Boyer you threw him out. That means slavery is now valid in Canada, and we return slavery to Canada. That's right. That's the law. That's right. That's the law. That's that now. However, However you, you are also using the law, and if you could explain to our viewers, uh, your bear bond yes. under the Warehouse Receipts Act, Okay, you have which is going to follow upon correct the proceeding on the twenty first. Correct. So basically, at this thing, uh, I uh, there's what's called the Warehouse Receipts Act. Okay, uh, I think we touched upon this in 1933. Yeah. The the states did it in 1947. We did it. The only revision, revised statement of on and, the and, Warehouse and, Receipts Act, and ba ba basically that's so that. The Vatican pays out a million dollars. Yes, per birth certificate. Correct. I was a I was a million dollar baby. I should have been become a million dollar baby yeah. had my dad not signed this form. Yeah. And I sat on the shelf for thirty eight years until I filed for a passport in Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. And they handed me my statement of birth because I refused to get on the statement that said, "Do you want a birth certificate?" Yeah. I said no. Yeah. They called me and said, Mr. Boyer, highly yeah. unusual that it was, you, you want, is there a reason why you did this? Or was it a mistake? Yeah. Do you, do you get why this is important? Yeah. And I went, uh, is this a landed issue? They went, yes. And, and it, had I been in Canada, would you just issue me a burst? Oh, yeah, you would have been automatic because you're landed here. And I went, so that means I actually can deny consent to be governed. Yes. Well, I do that because my dad told me I was not a million dollar baby, I was priceless, and if I ever had a chance not to sign a birth certificate, don't. You're telling me I don't have to sign a birth certificate? Well, I'm not, why? Out of respect for my dad, who's now dead. Okay, and two weeks later, they send me a statement of birth and a passport and no birth certificate, okay? My number is 665, okay? I, that's my birth number. See there? 665. Yeah. Okay? And the king died a month later. Isn't that cool? The registry opened. I was reg entered seventh on the 7th of January. The king died on the 10th. And 64 years later, I'm in a court on the anniversary of King George VI's death. And I'm going, will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? <laughs> I started off by, you know, with some levity, okay? <laughs> then, then I started ranting about, I don't like being your slave. 
I don't know, you got to drop this slavery on me. No, no, no. And they never did. They enforced it, they did it, and then I hit them with this here. Now, unbeknownst to me back then, I didn't know that in 1989, uh, Ontario passed this revision of the Warehouse Receipts Act, and that's attached in my file that you can find on my Facebook account, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's seven pages long. And it's actually a how-to collect my bond value. This is a bearer bond, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that I'm the only bearer bond like this in the world. Why? Ontario is the only place that has a, an ability to cash in this bearer bond. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay, and I'm saying, hey, they don't do this law every day, you know, and it happened to land the same year as I filed my abnormal birth, and uh, the, the, as the law reads there, it's their onus. I have what's called a negotiable bearer bond. Right. There were billions of these given out. Okay? Billions of them. Yeah. Literally. And every one of them got covered with a red seal, and which took the bond away, and the Pope gave them a million dollars for the baby. Right now, I think it's about $9 million for every baby they yeah. pay out. No, because it's your total life output of what the average citizen will total output of their lifetime is. Right. So the Pope pays the government this. They get to spend it right away. Right. And uh, that's just the way it is. It's, it's, it's a racket. Right. Okay. Uh, Jordan Maxwell outlines this racket quite well. Okay. And that's right. – okay. And basically, uh, I'm throwing at them that – uh, you're in default of this contract, and unless you can show me anyone else who has one of these bonds, this is all my money, period. Mm -hmm. This is all mine, and it's quintillions of dollars. The number is just way out there. It's all... Basically, this is all my money. It, it, that's what it is. I can't get around it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, I have to go before a court. Okay? And it says there that, uh, read the paperwork. It's not that long. It's, uh, yeah. It's, my, my, my report's not there. So basically, uh, I filed a motion where they have to, 30 days from, um, the date of filing, which was the yeah. 10th or the 11th, okay, yeah. when it was finally accepted. And that means on the 21st, 4-11, uh, a tribunal of three judges has to rule in a half an hour on a yay or nay. That's it. That's it. It's a half-hour session, and they have to rule on whether I get a stay and can start filing charges now and right. doing the paperwork that I get. Which is... Which is on the bear bond. Yes. You see that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got, a, I've got a, a thing set up with the Elections Canada where I've got them in default of giving me this $1,000. Right. From something that happened way back in the original 2005 case here. Exactly. Okay. And it takes a long time to express that one. We'll do that in another interview. No, no, no. Right. But uh, what I'm saying is that the, the ultimate payoff is to redeem all the debt in the Correct. world. So, so that, that that's at the end of your of your legal process. Correct, correct. Yeah. Now this here entitles me to do it. Yeah. How do I cash it in? The chief electoral officer of Canada is a Mark Midand. Yeah. Okay, and he's got a clerk called Eve Cote. And they're the exchequer and the clerk for the Queen. Right. Okay. They owe me a thousand dollars. Right. In that $1,000, they have to give me a note saying that they're returning my society to being under common law. It's part, it's a trap, okay? It's a contract, I could get into it, it gets really long and complicated, but bottom line is I have him on $1,000. Now, they were supposed to send this to me four months ago, they haven't. Back then I said, hey guys, it's only gonna take a few months of paperwork, but you know, send it or don't send it. I don't care. You send it, we're going to court. If you don't send it, we're going to court. That's all there is to it. Okay? 
And under the warehouse receipts, I, I can say, give me all the money to the clerk of the queen, and the clerk has to give me all the money. Okay? But that's covered in a passage in the Bible of who would want to inherit all the money in the world and lose his immortal soul? And when your birth number is 665, I take that to heart. Okay? Because the one after me is 666. Okay? Now, I'm saying that under the Warehouse Receipts Act, he owes me, the clerk for the queen owes me $1,000. Okay? And this note saying he's returning me to law, you know, return my person to a lawful society, which is the return of common law. And what I can do is I take his $1,000 check, I put it in you know, over here, and then I take my statement of birth and the note to return me to a lawful society, and I hand it back to the clerk. And now these become treasury notes. The entire value of King George's registry at today's value of gold returns in treasury notes. Creatio ex nihilo, the creation of everything from nothing. Okay? And it's there to redeem all currency in the world. Okay? And there's no way we, our dollars can collapse or our pounds can collapse because as soon as he takes this, he must redeem all debt in the world with it. Isn't that cool? Under a 337 demand that was placed by, way back in 2005. Right. Isn't that cool? And they're, and they're stuck. Yeah. And they're stuck. The Warehouse Receipts Act says they must pay out. Okay? They must. And that means the Pope has to open his coffers and redeem all debt in the world. Now, I could say, give the money to me. And technically, I'd become the Pope or I'd become the Queen, but I don't want, you know, again, I'm not going to do that. Right. But I can place it with the Exchequer. Okay? That's what I'm handing it to. And I'm handing it to, I'm handing it to the Exchequer. <coughs> right. And the Exchequer has to start taking all these trust bonds that are out there and all these people who have all the profits of the Boer War, all the profits from the Opium War, all the land trusts for natives, all the, uh, are all in our quadra riding. Wow. Just to start off with. Right. Quadra is the richest riding in Canada. Right. Why? All these Pacific Rim treaties, trust bonds, are in Vancouver. Wow. Okay, and specifically Quadra. Amazing. Okay, so they can pick on my writing right off the bat. But then the Massachusetts trust funds could now use my thing, since I'm not king, yeah. they could cash in and their warehouse receipts and do whatever they want to do with it. England right. could cash in their warehouse receipts. And that's covered in uh, Hebrews 11. Uh, we will take our certificates and march into Jerusalem. So, so you're seeing that there's almost a prophetic roadmap. Oh, it's more. To, it is. It's to, not more. It's almost. It is. Now, now you were talking about also Hillary Clinton being. Yes. Okay. The, the the you know she's probably going to be the next in in, in the prophecy they they call of the, of the Scarlet Whore, okay, and the Scarlet Whore is Hillary Clinton, and that's why Masons want to get her into power. Because mm -hmm. she'll either say yes or no, but in their vision, a scarlet whore has to be part of this equation. And why, okay? why is that? Because that's what Revelation says. Uh -huh. And it worked before. Okay, in 2000, in the year 1000, 1015, right around now, a thousand years ago, there was a Pope Innocent III, who is actually a female, who wore the red robes of the Pope, who did the slaughtering of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Cathars and the Inquisition of back then. And she most definitely did follow the script of the Bible to a T and gave us a millennium of misery. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And a thousand years later, the law society and the Masons were using me to return slavery to the world for another millennium of misery. And my number happens to be 665. 665, right. Okay? And I'm saying, over my dead body. <laughs> Sorry. Right. It's not going to happen on my ship. Yeah. I'm the first one out of the gate, and I'm challenging the law. Yeah. And by definition, okay, uh, what happens is, is timing. Uh, I was in court February 10th. Yeah. So I filed the appeal by... March 10th, or by, uh, it was, uh, Jan yeah, sorry, it was, uh, was January 10th here. So I filed, uh, no, February 10th. So I filed on March 10th. Yeah. And that means the Crown, or the Law Society, has to fill a formal written submission saying that they're challenging my writ to... Uh, stay, at, which means they have to execute orders, or they challenge it. Now, that's March 21st, which yeah. happens to be the equinox, right. and it happens to be the day Jesus Christ died on the cross, wow. according to the lunar calendar. Yeah. Okay, and I'm hitting here that everyone under the employ of the Attorney General is responsible for trafficking in my persons because they were acting as if the law would pass. It never did pass. And 10 years, or, you know, 12 years later, it's now into default. One week after the default, they act like the law is still in effect and they did it on purpose because they were going to use me to institute slavery all over the world. That's incredible. Okay, and that's all there is to it. And that's, you know, and basically because I challenged it with my warehouse receipt. Right. With in a, if I didn't have this, it would be worthless. Take my word for it. I yeah. would be, you know, they'd be laughing at me all the way to their bank, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because I've got a warehouse receipt and the 1989 Warehouse Receipts Act openly says that this is a negotiable bond, that they really cannot negotiate the value because it's a bearer bond. 64 years later, how many other people bear this bond? And Rockefeller, who set it up in 1933, predicted that, yes. that there'd be a person that just like me who would who would find the clue, and he actually laughs about it, saying that what will he do with it? Ha 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 ha! And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm returning the cash in all debt in the world, and they're bound. The Pope is bound. The Queen is bound. You know the 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 the, the, the great Shahs. Everybody is bound to redeem their warehouse receipts because that's what the offer is, okay? It's quintillions, octillions of dollars immediately. And uh, it fulfills that the men of the Nineveh will rise in indignation and condemn this generation. And that's the trustees. The trustees are everywhere. You know, the trustee in Vancouver, we don't have one. But then I'm the reason for that. But that's another story. Okay? But every city's got a trustee. He, he, that trustee makes two to three times more than the, uh, the mayor. The trustee for General Motors makes two three times more than the president. The trustees of every corporation out there. You can't have a major corporation without a trustee. So they're there. Not if but when all debt in the world is redeemed so that the, the system doesn't fall apart, okay? And, you know, I don't know, maybe there is 186,000 trustees out there. Sounds like a realistic number. But the Bible likes this 186,000 individuals. It's a number out there. And it's actually a realistic number of how many trustees there are. And they're there to make sure that the system doesn't fall apart when all debt in the world is paid. Not if, when all debt in the world is paid. And I've snuck through a really, really, really narrow door, and I'm not falling for the trap of saying, give me the money. I'm saying, no, I give it to the exchequer, and the exchequer can now start cashing in trust bonds 
for the last 7,000 years. And that's paradise on earth. And, and that 7,000 years is way back when uh, they wrote the rule of law that now governs Canada. Right. Govern Canada. The Sumerian tablets were found in 1850 by a guy called, you know, and Albert Pike went to the, mm -hmm. the museums and could read uh, cuneiform. Mm -hmm. He was fluent at cuneiform. He just started reading, just started reading it. And uh, he taught them how to read it. Okay? And at the time, he was saying, see, this confirms that I'm Lucifer. I can break the code. Right. Okay? And uh, there's a dark story behind that, uh, but I won't get into that now. Yeah. Okay. But bottom line is, uh, he broke the code. And uh, back in 19, 1867, uh, they, there was at least 30, 40,000 tablets. 100,000 found in one place, 35,000 tablets. Because that, that one told that there was another tablet cache over here. So they went and got, found another tablet cache. That terrible cache said there was another tablet cache over here. So they found that one. And they brought them all in. And it describes the history of Sumer for about 1,000 years. In detail okay and back in 67 1867 Canada adopted the Sumerian criminal code and the Sumerian Constitution and that people don't know our rule of law is Sumer's rule of law our section 336 and 337 340 is all Sumer laws all sorts of really premium laws in the, the protect the Constitution and things are from Sumeria and they duplicated it they, they did their level best to imitate what happened in Sumer because uh, it would led to the return of paradise okay it was it was a key to return to paradise and uh, it was through a guy like me, okay? Uh, I slipped through the cracks. Uh, my abnormal birth landed in uh, 1989, which is 430 years after the establishment of a human covenant recognized by God, which was the Act of Supremacy of 1559, signed by Queen Elizabeth, where the queen was not above the law. Okay, and it settled the wars. Four years later, in 1663, and I'm saying 430 years after that is when my abnormal birth landed, and they filed this Warehouse Receipts Act. Okay, it's unique throughout the world. Four years later is when the Act of Supremacy of Parliament came in, and basically they took the power away and said that Parliament, because it represented all the people and the banksters, we're now above the law, which they always were before. And uh, that's what Jefferson called the original departure principle, where one bad principle enforces a one another bad law to another bad law to another bad law. And this is the four horse, uh, the four horse of public debt that will drive our and you know our our forefathers out of the homes that you built. You know, and that's basically was 15. 63 and in 15 in 1960 1993 nafta was passed which was the embodiment of all evil where they started enslaving everybody because by 1998 they changed the all the oaths in canada were changed and in 2001 the provisions were put into effect the provisions expired on 2015, and just like clockwork, they do this bullshit. There's no soft bullshit. A legal, perfectly legal maneuver to say you have no provisions for slavery. We just signed this agreement, and you now must impose slavery on your people. And that's just the way it is. It's the law. UCC is supreme. They would have won, but I'm fine. I'm the one who got there first. Okay, and I'm saying redeem all debt in the world. Redeem all debt in the world because there's enough money here to redeem all debt in the world. That's the function behind it. And technically, I could say give it to me, but no, no. I'm giving, I've got this thousand dollars that the exchequer wants to give me, and I'm going to take it 
take my note to return my person to a lawful society, hand it back to him, and he has to redeem all debt in the world, not me. The bond redeems all debt in the world, not me. He can do whatever he wants. He can hand this bond to 666, and there's nothing I can do about it. Okay? Or he can create the most benevolent force in the world, which is the redemption of all death. It comes down to faith or the lack thereof. Okay? This trust is being cashed in 7,000 years after its inception. Isn't that cool? It is. Okay? And basically, uh, it's an end run. Uh, on the 21st, they have to... Uh, the bar has to decide whether they'll even fight this. Chances are they won't file a thing, which places them into default and puts the ball court, the, uh, the, the, the ball back in my part. Right. Okay. It's like uh, Jordan Maxwell says, you know, the ball will be, the racket will be bounced back into my court. Okay. Where I file saying, I want that thousand dollars that's in default from the queen. And you give me the thousand dollar check and the note saying that you'll approve, you know, the, the return to common law. And exactly as to Roman, uh, no, first Corinthians seven, the one with the, the one with the abnormal birth, abnormal birth will bring the dead to life through human means, which is, you know, I'm, Take, coming to the courts and saying, abandon maritime law and return to common law. And that would literally be taking the dead to life through human means. That prophecy says there's some mayhem and things happen. And then a guy like me is sent up to heaven with, and he brings everything to my Lord. Not everything under God, but the everything under Christ. I place it on the feet of God. God hands it to Jesus, and Jesus comes back and brings life to the dead once and for all, and we enter paradise on earth. Again, it's not me who does it. It's this guy called Jesus Christ who returns in body and flesh to liberate all dead, you know, and, and redeem us all. And uh, I have big dreams. <laughs> and they, they, you know, it's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. That's twice. I tried it once before, failed. Okay. And uh, that happened to land on the 1290 days of uh, uh, Obama's reign. And uh, I said, Daniel's 11 says uh, uh, there will be 1290 days from the date of the Obama nation that causes desolation is set up. And that happened 1,290 days after Obama's inauguration. Happened on August 2nd, 2011. Isn't that cool? And I was in a courtroom trying to cash in my warehouse receipt at the time. And it said there that pray that nothing happens on 35, no, 35 days later, which were 45 days later, which landed on Yom Kippur. Mm. And nothing happened. Isn't that cool? Of, of, 20th. of 2011. Oh, 2011. And at the time, you know, I was, as the Jonah was back then, very despondent. Oh, I thought this thing going to work. You know, like what? And, and, you know, and basically, it might, like, the message given back to me, and, you know, you read the book, it says it has to happen more than once. I see. And I was told, you, you went too fast. They're oh. not ready yet. <laughs> Sit back. Enjoy right. yourself. You know, when it's time, you'll, you'll and right now, <coughs> you know, I find out that a week after everything that they prosecuted me under is in default, I think this is the right time to do it. Right. So you, you think that you've hit time sync, that, that is on your timeline, you're syncing up with the larger timeline. Yes. Okay. okay and, 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 and I'm basically saying that as to prophecy, if they reject this, yeah. uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, is highly likely to happen because I mentioned there too. And and what does two Thessalonians two say? That's where the guy, the abomination, the or abomination that causes desolation, uh, does all kinds of fraudulent miracles and wondrous signs 
that deceive all those who believed in the lie and are destroyed. Okay? And that would fulfill the prophecy of there will be no miracles until the sign of Jonah. And if that's fraudulent miracles, then that's two Thessalonians too. And we're, you know, they're cooking up a space invasion through harp, through, oh, oh, through, oh, oh, through, oh, they're, they're, you know, through what's and, called. And, uh, and so that is what the scarlet woman, Hillary Clinton, is going to cause. A basically, space right now, the, the Masons are scrambling. Okay. Back in 2011, Hillary was the Minister of State. And the Minister of State is actually the one who runs the United States, and Obama runs a corporation called the United States. I see. Okay? So back then when they did this, I walked across the street. From the courthouse was the U.S. Embassy. And they went, yeah, we know who you are. You know, they did a, voice, they did a face recognition of that high-ranking Secret Service guy came out, and I said, the 20, you know, the 1290 days has just been violated. You know, the scarlet whore, you know, Hillary Clinton is the lady in charge and she's got to do something. And within a week or two after that, she resigned from the post of doing it because she wasn't going to do it. You know, and she sat out until now where she's running. And right now I'm clamoring this through and they're going, we don't have a scarlet whore out there. And that's why, the, you know, if you ask me in deep religious things, you know, in their twisted yeah. logic, they need a scarlet whore there to do it, okay? Yeah, and you're saying they want to do another millennium of misery. Yes. Just like Pope Innocent, Innocent the Third, who was actually a woman. Yes. The last scarlet whore. Correct. Brought in a millennium of misery. In the yeah, year and that. almost to the year. A thousand years later, they're doing so, it again. So how do we disempower this whole thing? Uh, cash in my warehouse receipt. Paradise oh. on Earth is guaranteed. Okay. Par and it's not me. It's not me who did it. Yeah. Okay? I have to do what Section 336 of the Criminal Code of Canada says, a charitable act. Yeah. Okay? All these laws that they're hitting me with saying, Mr. Porter, you're not allowed to charge. You're not allowed to benefit from it. You're not allowed to do things. So you're right. Great. See, I'm not. <laughs> Go ask any of the guys I'm defending if they've given me a time. They go, no, yeah, yeah. I don't want a dime for this. In fact, take the money. Yeah. Okay, and in my appeal, I point out to them that you give me the right to, to file charge, you know, to file papers, and I'll immediately file on chief electoral officer to give me my $1,000. And in return, I'll give him my bond, and he has to now redeem all debt in the world and cash in all the warehouse receipts in, you know, all these trust bonds. Mm -hmm. And that returns paradise on earth. Right. Okay. Every one of these guys is uh, having the right to uh, fix his wrongdoings by upholding God's creation. Because that's the new covenant. Right. Okay. The old covenant was held by Abraham. And... In Galatians, it says there's going to be a guy who will be called Abraham's seed who will augment the trust. And I'm saying Moses or Abraham was of God because he served God. Okay? The augmenting of the trust happens by upholding God's creation. And in this way, we share in the burden and share in the glory of God, which is very Masonic in tone and nature. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because Jesus Christ did say, don't you know we are gods? Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's as simple as going from binary to quadra. Mm -hmm. You know, our, 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 our DNA yeah. will go from binary to quadra. And this happens to be quadra writing. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Okay, so basically what I'm triggering is the return of the sons of the living God. Hmm. Okay? Which is cool because yeah. it changes everything. Okay? Uh, First Corinthians says the message of the new covenant will be so basic and so fundamentally simple, yet will never have been written, and people will be shocked that it's so easy. Hmm. And it boils down to one word for everything. Okay? God, there are two everythings. Monotheism, Christianity, 
Hinduism and uh, uh, Abraham, all Abraham's faith, including uh, the, uh, the, Ar the, the Arabs, okay? Mm -hmm. All their sects. All believe that there are two everythings. There's everything spiritual and everything of substance. And when we go from upholding everything spiritual to everything of substance, we are going from upholding God or serving God to upholding God's creation. And in this way, we will know godliness. The sons of the, the, sons of the living God liberate us. And uh, that's a Romans 8. And there it says, all past suffering will seem insignificant compared to the glory that's revealed when the sons of the living God arise. Okay? And there's a prophecy there that fits today to a T. For the last five to seven years, there's been all these moaning and groanings from the earth coming out, these whale sounds and thunderous thumping. Mm -hmm. And it says there that the creation itself will groan, will be groaning in anticipation of being liberated from its bondage to decay. To the glorious freedom of all those people, of all God's children. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, all this thumping and ramblings of the earth have all started about the same time that uh, they filed my original category. Isn't that cool? Uh, you know, what can I say? These are coincidences. Uh, everybody knows we're in our end times. Just look around you. You're supposed to be able to distinguish the messenger because the prophecy says there will be all kinds of false prophets. And you're supposed to know by the beauty of the message. Well, how much more beautiful is the message of all debt in the world being redeemed and to fulfill a 7,000-year-old trust, Sumerian trust? And they're all bound. They're all legally bound to do it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And the worst they can say is no. Yeah. But if they say no, they're doing it on the testimony of two or three witnesses on the 21st, which happens to be the date. So if they object, they have to file it. Yeah. They have to file on the 21st, which is the day Jesus Christ died. Yeah. And then they have to appear 30, you know, from the date I filed, 33 days later, which is this Masonic number again, yeah. on 411. Then these Masons like 11. I don't know why. They, you know, that 311 happened. The Fukushima disaster happened on 311. The 9-11 uh, uh, happened here. World War II and World War I ended on 11-11. They really like that. You know, they, the Paris bombings happened on, I think it was 6-11 or 4, you know, 5-11 or something like this. They really like that 11 date. Yeah, that, that 11 date. Yeah. World so on that date, yeah. three, two or three witnesses are going to have to rule on Redeeming all debt in the world. Yeah. Isn't that cool? I, I think it's great. <laughs> I think Prophecy it's great. says they'll win. Prophecy says I'll win. Well, you know, you are going to have to come back. Yes. On those dates. Or, you know, and report back around those dates. Correct. Because, I mean, this could be huge. Oh, it is huge. It, it can't get it. it I'm the only such receipt in the world. Its function is to redeem all debt in the world. I've got them where not only do they have to do it as a benevolent act, but by law, I caught them doing it when they were enslaving the world. Which is, Again. Right. Which is signing, uh, allowing the the. The, the slavery law, anti-slavery law to lapse. Yes. And then signing the TPP intentionally a week after the lapse. Yes. Right. Yes. And that way the courts can say, see, you slap Mark Boyer, slavery laws are there, we can do slavery. Yes. And the number 665 would be responsible for the return of all slavery to the whole world. Right. Over my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say on that one. You know, sorry. No, no, and this is going out to the court of public opinion. Oh, hey, how do how do they get around? As I said to the to, to the to the uh, chief lawyer for the bar, how do you get around my warehouse receipt? How do you do it? 
And he didn't have an answer. I said, you either have to appeal. You, how do you make an argument on this? And he didn't have an answer. And it says, you have to do something on the 10th or on the 21st, 10 days after, which is the day Jesus Christ died. Or somewhere during Holy Week, I got to file a document to drag in the chief electorate. Because I, you know, in my, you know, the last document of this is my, my thing. And I'm saying, I, this guy owes me a thousand bucks and that's why I want to go to court. And you're redeeming your warehouse receipt and Jesus Christ is the redeemer. Correct. Wow, how symbolic. No, what can I say? And, you know, Isaiah 59 says, the Redeemer will come to Jacob, and those who believe that, it, you know, the redemption, it, it, it redeems all debt in the world, da, 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 are yeah. saved. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going, hey, guys, that's what it reads. And that's from a guy called The Voice from the West. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. This is a guy with The Voice from the West. This is, syn this is synchronicity and prophecy. Oh, yeah, yeah, and basically, uh, you know, Every time I start talking like this in biblical terms, I make, I, it's like my friends just run away. You know, nobody wants to hear it. But then, you know, prophecy says the guy who does this will have, nobody will want to listen to him. It's like it's too complex. Well, you know, I mean, it's just synchronous. Yes. And it's very interesting. We'll see. It just depends. Well, what we'll do is we'll monitor reality and see how reality shifts. Correct. That, that's all you can do. Correct. That's all I can do. You know, bottom line is I'm hitting them when the fig leaves are sprouting their shoots. Yeah. And you go out here, you know, right now today. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I filed it last week, yeah, yeah. You, the, the, you the, are, the fig leaves were sticking out. The yeah, fresh yeah, yeah. green sprout on the that, fig leaves. That, that's a science. It's the science of hermeneutics. And you're a, a hermeneuticist. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton, his proudest scientific accomplishments were in the area of hermeneutics. So you're, you're just practicing a science and you're making scientific observations, that's all. I'm just saying, you know, like, they can't get around. They can't get around. The Warehouse Receipts Act says the Pope has to redeem all debt in the world. Yeah. And if that makes him glorious, great. I don't care. It's not me. Okay? If the queen wants to pay all debt in the world with it, great. You know? If the, if the emperor of China wants to redeem all his people from the debt, great. I don't, you know, it's, it, 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 they'll all do it. Okay? And it brings in what the Sanskrit calls our golden age. Yeah. Okay? And that's a, a millennium, 10,000 years of paradise on earth. Right. Well, you know, uh, the Bible says, oh, those people with weak faith. No, it's forever we're in paradise on earth. Yeah. Get over with it. It's forever. It's not 10,000 years. There will be another creation happen on earth. There will be another Adam. There will be another Moses. There will be another Jesus. There will be another prophet. All happen across the next millennium change. We are the center of the universe. All we're doing is going from channel 8 to channel 13. And hopefully nobody goes to channel 5. Are those numbers symbolic? The Fibonacci, yeah, the Fibonacci sequence. Oh. Right? Okay, the next balancing point is, okay, some will go as high as 17. Oh. 21, I'm sorry. Okay, but, you know, bottom line is, according to the Fibonacci sequence and the... Uh, uh, what's called the selfagios, uh, the we're stuck in eight ohms. Okay, I see. The dark forces are stuck. Okay, it's one plus one makes two. Two plus one makes three. Three plus two makes five. Yeah. Five plus three makes eight. Yeah. Three, uh, five, you know, eight plus five makes thirteen. Yeah. Thirteen plus uh, eight makes 21, yeah. okay, and that's the Fibonacci sequence, yeah. and it's all these harmonics that they created on the, on the tone board, yeah. you know, of all notes, okay, and there's, you know, we're stuck in eight ohms. Yeah. All prayers work on eight ohms. 
all chanting in the world is done on eight ohms. Right. You're connecting to the Schumann resonance yeah. at eight ohms. Okay, we're going to 13 ohms. Yeah. Okay, and it's a place right here. It's like channel 13 exists right here. Yeah. And it's paradise on earth. And when we go from here to here, you're going to go, wow, is the world ever nice? Yeah. And that's called the shaking, like the world has never seen and never see again. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And I the story believe. carries on. Yeah, it's yeah. And it, it, it's no, they're turning on, quote, the dark energy. Correct. And or, literally, it, it, you know, and that's just DNA engineering that we were subjected to. Correct. You know, in the blink of an eye, First Corinthians 15 says, in the twinkling of an eye, we will be awakened. Okay? And uh, that's when this human, through human means, brings the dead to life through human means. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay? This guy called Jesus Christ brings life to the dead. Okay? Once and for all. And that's not me. Yeah. Okay? That's not me. I, I, I'm telling you. That's not me. Yeah. Okay? He's coming. Real soon. I'm preparing the way. Yeah. Because I'm bringing the dead to life through human means and redeeming all dead in the world. Right. Why not? The worst they can say is no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst they can say is no. And on that, you know, the, technically they can't say they can't say no. This lower court can't say no, which will send me up to an exchequer's court in 411. Isn't that cool? I think it's great. And in 411, if they want to take more than half an hour, I'll let them. <laughs> <laughs> You understand? If they want to take more than half an hour to do this, I, you know. Yeah. But, you know, in the meantime, as soon as they say, Mr. Burry, you can file, as sure as God made little green apples, I'm filing. You owe me a thousand bucks. Yeah. You give me that thousand dollars with the note saying that you're going to uphold God's creation and, sir, you know, and return to go holding common law, and I'll give you my bond back, okay? Yeah. And that's what my dad said. Don't ever get a birth certificate until you have to. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to have to, okay? Because yeah. I'm handing them into the, the, the Queen's Exchequer. Right. To, and, you know, why not? Yeah. You know, what can I say? Uh, uh, I use an expression that uh, really uh, scares a lot of people. Uh -huh. And it goes, and I used it in my Supreme Court of Canada papers last year. And it says, nobody gets out of this alive. <laughs> <laughs> we all turn into spiritual flesh and yeah. enter paradise on earth, okay? Which is really, you know, it's, it's, you know, and then what? You understand? It's like, but literally, you know, nobody gets out of this alive, <laughs> which is really a cool concept, okay? I, I have no problem, okay? Every day a million people die and a million people are ascended, you know? This is just one day where 10 billion people are rising from the dead. <laughs> you know, it's the greatest show on earth. Yeah. It's, you understand? It literally brings the raising of the dead. Okay? Uh huh. And it's, it's been a promise. Yeah. But do you think that the forgiveness of debt is connected to dimensional ascension? Oh, yes. The dement and it's connected to the new covenant, which is literally the new creation. Mm hmm. Period. It's, 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 the only requirement is well, faith. But, no, but you, you would have to outlaw the, you would have to outlaw banks, debt, money. Oh, all, 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 all debt in the world must be paid. It's, yeah. problem. it's just automatic. Yeah. Uh, you know, because the trustees are in charge, they're going to get, don't worry about it, stay at home, the check's in the mail. You know, whatever salary you had then, you're making now. Don't worry, the grocery stores are not going to be, you know, there's going to be jobs for the truck drivers to move the trucks. And da, 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 da. We're literally entering into a time where the robots can do everything. Okay? Mm -hmm. Menial tasks. We, we are not going to be stuck to the sweat and toil. I see. Okay? Uh, literally, 
robots are going to be able to pick the fruit, go out and put just the right amount of nutrients under every plant. Da, da, da. All these things are possible where we literally have 80% unemployment. 80% unemployment is paradise on earth. But then you have to educate people not to... First uh, Timothy 3 covers that. Okay, and it's the, this guy who is from the worst will pick from the worst, and they will teach the world this year. And I'm saying that's the law society. The law society has much more credibility than the churches ever did. The churches want to participate, great. But the, pla the, place being, but the burden is being placed on the law society to educate people. Why? They're the ones who have to defend them. Sorry, I, I, I missed the whole jump there. Oh, okay. Uh, 1 Timothy 3 mm -hmm. clearly announces that they have to, there's a body of people who will be entrusted to deliver the message. Okay. Okay. And I'm saying that's the law society. Okay. In Romans 10. And, and, what, and, and what message is that? Uh, learn to live in paradise on earth. Okay. Learn, it, 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 it'll require a, a learning schedule. There are people who are absolute workaholics uh, who are going to have to learn that, you know, uh, they, they have to retire. I see. Okay, in Brazil, the retirement age, it's pretty well accepted that you don't work after you're 50 because you got to give your job to somebody. If you're in public service, yeah, you're retired off at 50, especially the higher-ups because it's the only way the younger guys can move up. Uh -huh. Okay, so bringing in early retirement at 36 or something like this would guarantee that the youth would have, would have jobs. And at 36, most people are starting to say, hey, uh, I know what I want to do with my life. Right. And they could start a farm, they could, start a, they could do fish hatching, they could do become whatever. Enjoy your life, you know, and become, we will become a very agrarian society. We will go back to neighborhood farms, neighborhood, you know, communities, uh, uh, not locking your doors. Uh, uh, the, word of, the word of God will be coming out of our children's mouth, or our children's mouth, or our children's mouth, mm -hmm. and we'll be basking in the glory of the living God being here, mm -hmm. okay? Which is uh, the, a state that happened in Eden. And mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of dark, I, I go into really dark things, mm -hmm. and this is not the time to do it. Oh. But, you know, bottom line is, um, the offer is being made, and uh, uh, the Bible says very clearly that once the shaking has happened, uh, Everyone, you know, who witnesses the shaking will be on their knees babbling all the sins they possibly could because they, eat, and it doesn't say these, because they'll either not want to be part of what's happening or they want to be part of what's happening. It's very unclear. Okay, but the shaking of the, of the world is literally the dead rising from, from, the, from the ground. Uh, literally. In... Um, Spiritual flesh. And Jesus Christ had spiritual flesh when he came down. Okay, there's a, a strong argument uh, that uh, uh, when Jesus was re resurrected, uh, doubting Thomas, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus Christ came to him and said, mm -hmm. stick your hand in the cut. See, there's flesh and bone. There was no blood. It was totally drained. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we become spiritual flesh, and there is no blood. We will not have blood. Okay, we will have the sacred waters through us, but we won't have blood. You know, the fallen angels became fallen angels by eating blood or drinking blood. And that goes back, that's a hundred thousand years ago. Okay, this has been going on for a long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're returning to paradise on earth, whether you like it or not.
we will be able to do what those uh, grays do, which is walk through the walls. We'll be uh, able to uh, come to our garden and go, six people are coming for lunch. Uh, make sure you have enough for salad for six. And there will be a garden there when you come back from picking your manna because the vault is returning. And the vault is mentioned in Luke 21, 25. And the vault is all these people who have visions of the fairies living in an under, you know, in the underworld mm -hmm. is actually visions of success stories of civilizations that are actually now under the vault in channel 13. Mm -hmm. Okay. The vault is returning and you'll literally be able to go out in the morning and take your basket and get your basket of manna. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Yeah. You'll be able to come up to any apple tree and can I have an apple, please? And the apple tree will just gladly give you an apple right on the spot. It's, it's the return of paradise on earth. Right. It's a uh, density ascension. In, Correct. In kind of my... Correct. You'll literally be able to talk to your dog. Okay? Right. You'll literally be able to talk to your cat. Okay? And they'll respond back. Okay? In the Garden of Eden, the snake actually talked. I know it's symbolic, but, you know, uh, animal world is not that far off. We will be able to talk to the animals. The yeah. lamb yeah. will be able to be beside the the lion right okay uh, what i'm doing uh, a pessimist would say i'm cornering a rat that can do anything but i really 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 appreciate the story of the mouse that took the thorn out of the lion's paw much more appropriate to what i'm doing okay and the lion will be forever you know Grateful to the and to the to the mouse and protect them. It's it's what's called the great divide. Uh, the promise or the hope is everyone survives, everyone ascends, and that's and regardless, another creation is going to happen here. We ascend into the thirteenth, you know, into. Selfeggio 13, Earth will have another Adam, it'll have another Moses, it'll have another Jesus, it'll have another Muhammad, it'll have an entire repeat of the whole thing, just like the Bible says. Jesus Christ says this will happen over and over and over and over, and it has happened over and over and over in the past. And uh, we live on faith and faith alone. And uh, we live in interesting times. <laughs> and the worst they can say is no. <coughs> Literally, the worst they can say is no. And uh, they can't say no to the bear, to the bear bond. Uh, the court that appeals it can say no. Okay, do you understand? It's like on 411, there can be a no there. But it's also an opening for the bonds the trust bonds of the world to start cashing in. And in this way, we march into Jerusalem with our certificates. Paradise on earth, no substitute for it. Happens one way or the other. On that Godspeed. Very interesting. Okay, we got an interview there. I think so. Okay, cool. It was shorter, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop recording. There we go. Did you get it? Yeah. Hit the stop. Stop recording. Well, there we go. Here, I'll get it. Okay. I've hit it three times now. Maybe yeah. I didn't. Maybe. No, it's just...